Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So let me welcome you all to worship here at Whitehead Presbyterian Church. If you're here for the first time or you're here all the time, you are very, very welcome. And if you join us later online, you're indeed very welcome. And we hope to see you back at worship if you haven't been for a while. So do feel welcome as you come to join us for worship this morning here. And so I'd like to also welcome back to the pulpit our friend, Reverend Heather Randall. Heather is no stranger here. Heather was brought up here, um, and so Heather, we always look forward to having you back with us and sharing God's word with us this morning. So you're very welcome. We pray God's blessing upon you this morning. And so there are a number of announcements, so do please bear with me. Um, and so tea and coffee and biscuits will be served as usual in the welcome area, so do please avail of that. And if you require the services of a minister, please see the details on the screen. And as I done, Maybe a couple of weeks ago, as you'll remember, we welcomed new members into the choir. And so we have another new member in the choir. And so we'd like to welcome back Robert to the choir. And he's hiding behind, right behind the pulpit. And so, and so I'd just like to welcome him. I'm sure I'll get told off for later on. So welcome back, Robert. And so, do you remember the Arise petition? I'm not going to go through the whole list with you. It's still, if you wish to sign, it's in the vestibule or here at the front. And that's by open doors. There are two home groups meeting this week. Uh, the office home group will meet tomorrow in the church office from 2 p.m. And the home group led by Alec will meet in the home of Lex and Helen this coming Tuesday evening at half past seven. There is an invitation to join with our friends in the Congregational Church again this Tuesday morning from half past 10 until 12 noon for their drop-in coffee and chat and everyone will be made very welcome to this. Uh, an invitation from the Presbyterian Women for All Ladies of the Church. Uh, the Church Women's Group will meet this coming Tuesday the 5th of November at 2 p.m. in the Minor Hall. At this meeting, Noel McKee, who is a mental health counsellor, will speak on the topic of stress. All women of the congregation will be welcome, as I've said. A meeting of Kirk's session will take place on Thursday the 7th of November, this coming Thursday, at half past seven in the Bradley Room, so please note the change of uh, night or normal later meeting. Weekly prep Saturday prayer meeting takes place this coming Saturday again, so do please avail of that at 10 o'clock in the Bradley Room. So, here we go. Christmas is coming, about eight weeks away, as much as we don't like to think about it. In four weeks time, four or five weeks time, the Victorian Street Fair is coming. And so you'll see from the announcement that we need your help, or as I've heard, your church needs your help. So to facilitate our, our mission, in this, in this town and community, there will be people coming and using our halls, coming in to, uh, and to come to the street fair. And so as a church, we plan to have a cafe. And, and so we are, we're asking members of the congregation to provide scones, uh, tray, tray bakes and buns, all nice little things. And so if you can do so, there will be sign-up sheets in the vestibule or, or in the back porch. So please do uh, think about that, because we need all these nice buns to, to make people feel welcome here, especially for me. <laughs> and so also, if you can help serve at the street fair, there are also sign-up sheets. So please do uh, sign your name if you can offer even one hour to, sign, to help during that uh, Saturday, on this Saturday, uh, the 30th of November from 12 noon and 4 p.m. And I'm sure there are plenty of slots. So if you get in early, you, you'll definitely be able to pick, have a good pick of the, the times when you want. But if you wait at the last minute, we will just have to take what comes. And so also on that, if you need any further information, do speak to Letty, Aris, or Sharon. And Sharon's the only one to think with us this morning. So Sharon will, will direct and guide you. And on that also, there, we also need your help uh, to set up the halls on the Friday evening. <coughs> and we, again, we need 
heavy lit people who was heavy who were able to lift tables and set up the cafe area in the Brown Memorial Hall. And also people who will come on the Saturday and help steward and help basically show people around the halls for the wheelchair access or or, or general welcome people to enter our halls. And if you need any further information, do speak to Ronnie, if I'm right saying that, Ronnie. Yeah, do speak to Ronnie or myself, and we'll be able to direct you and help you. So please do. This is an outreach of our congregation. So please, please do think of that. Um, and so I'll move on away from Christmas and we'll come back to the normal. Preliminary no notice for members of church committee. A church meeting of church committee will take place on Tuesday the 12th of November at half past seven in the church office and a good attendance is desired. Uh, notice further along you'll see and uh, we are having this uh, communion again on uh, the 17th of November. Now I'm not sure whether elders will visit because we will be doing our visitation before Christmas but there will be communion tokens available as you come in so please do sign that. So, Communion will be on Sunday the 17th of November at the morning service, led by the Reverend Peter Bovo. And so, as we come to observe the sacrament of the Lord's Supper on that day too, please pray about this, this as you prepare your hearts. And on that day also, there's a service in the Kilcone Church, IMBD, First IMBD, Presbyterian as it was. Um, it's a light and darkness, it's a service for those who have been bereaved. I'm not going to read all the announcement, but many of us have experienced loss in our lives and opportunities to acknowledge this can be helpful. You'd be, you'd be very welcome to join the people in IWD for this short service as we remember our loved ones and turn our eyes towards God. Maybe you, can, you would like to take some time and space before the season of Advent occurrences. And in Psalm 34, verse 18, the Lord is close to the broken heart. And just for next Sunday, as I announced last Sunday, next Sunday is Remembered Sunday. And to our service here in the church will be at half past 11. So half past 11 here in the church, which will include an act of remembrance and will be led by the Reverend John Woodside. And that's to facilitate those who wish to attend the civic service at the seven and a half at 11 o'clock. And we'll also have our afternoon service at four o'clock here in the church, uh, uh, led by the home group. So these are all the announcements. And we again will hand over to the choir, who we're going, who are going to sing a new piece, and I believe we'll be singing this in a few weeks' time. So do please follow the choir. So let us continue to worship God. Sing 
I feel as though I could have done with a cup of coffee and possibly something stronger uh, getting through all of those. Um, it's certainly a, a busy time of year, but it's great to be with you before that busy time of year. It's great that we can just take time together to be still and to hear some verses from Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Let us pray. God, by your power may we, with all the saints, comprehend the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that we may be filled with your fullness. Amen. We stand, if we are able, to sing that wonderful hymn of praise, Immortal, <laughs> Invisible, God Only Wise. Oh, 
sovereign God, Lord God, our Father. You are in heaven, high and lifted up, higher than our highest thoughts. Holy is your name. Beside you there is no other. You are God and you alone. You, O oh God, are mighty forever. You cause the wind to blow and the rain to fall. You sustain the living, give life to the dead. Support the falling, loose those who are bound. And keep your faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, O oh God? of mighty acts. Praise be to you forever. Against the purity, light and truth of your being, our humanity looks shabby and sullied. We have souls stained with sin, even when we try our best to be good and faithful followers of Jesus. We fail so often because of character weakness, deliberate choices, and a willingness, or maybe just a weakness, to be led away from you. We sin by thinking that you have anything other than love and our good in your heart for us. Because we are so self-absorbed and arrogant, convinced of our own opinions and viewpoints, which are never formed in full knowledge of people or situations. As children to a loving father, we earnestly ask that you would remind us again of your mercy and grace. May the light of your Holy Spirit shine within our souls. And may we know your forgiveness and peace. In that knowledge of restoration and cleansing, with the burden of guilt and shame lifted, may we in turn, by the Holy Spirit, reach out to forgive others and restore relationships. And so as a redeemed and forgiven community of faith in this church, we draw all our prayers together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught his followers to say, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we come now to our first reading this morning, which is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 18 to 25. Matthew chapter 4, 18 to 25. If you want to follow in the Pew Bibles, it's on page 968. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. 
They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases. Those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralysed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. This is the word of God. Amen. And so we now worship God with our offering. <laughs> present God with our financial offerings may we present also ourselves all that we have been all that we are and all that we shall become accept all that we give and use all to the glory of your kingdom in Jesus name we pray amen stand to sing our next um, song of praise. I just want to make a comment about the introit, the Holy Forever. That is an incredible piece of praise music and I would, if you don't know it, if you're not familiar with it, I would strongly encourage you to look it up on YouTube, especially the Chris Tomlin version. It's, it's just amazing and it really does reflect well on the holiness of God. But now we're going to stand and sing um, um, by faith which is one I don't know, but I'm looking forward to hearing you sing it and teach it to me. So let's stand and praise God by singing by faith. Thank you. 
now to our prayers of intercession, our prayers for others, so let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm has bound the restless wave. Eternal Father, we bring to you our prayers today for the people of Spain, especially in Valencia and the surrounding districts so dreadfully affected by the recent flooding. Lord, we have no experience of a sudden tsunami of water destroying everything we thought might be safe, secure and a place of refuge. We have no experience of seeing loved ones washed away in cars in front of us or clinging on to lamp posts or seeking refuge on roofs. So Lord, forgive our inadequate words. We pray that you will bring comfort to those who know they are bereaved. Give peace to the fearful. Give strength and protection to the emergency services and the army. Bless with your presence and abundance the communities helping each other as they seek to bring order and a semblance of familiarity out of chaos. Lord God, this is a significant week for the people of the United States and therefore the rest of the world as they vote or discover the outcome of votes for their president. Lord, we simply ask that as so many in that country claim to follow you, that there would be a spirit of healing, of forgiveness, whatever the result. That your spirit would roam freely through that land and bring peace and harmony to families, communities, counties, and indeed maybe the country that seems so fractured by this choice. We pray for our own country with a social fabric that seems perilously frayed. We think of the family of the teenage girl stabbed multiple times and left for dead in Hessel outside Hull stabbed by people she knew. But we pray for all those whose lives have been shattered by violence. And we especially bring to you all those who suffer at the hands of those they have loved and trusted, and who have borne the physical brunt of an arrogance that sees others as property or a legitimate punch bag. Heavenly Father, help us here in this church to be a home and a refuge of peace for all those who suffer, largely in silence, for fear of our judgment. We pray for those who are struggling with health challenges, facing tests, results, perhaps even just a diagnosis, with concerns for the future. We pray for those who are increasingly anxious about Christmas for financial reasons, but may the joy and hope of the incarnation of your Son, bringing abundance and blessing and life, be how we help those with such fear. Help us to be generous in our giving out of the abundance of your blessing on us. 
And we pray for this church and the Kirk session as they seek to shepherd your people through this challenging season. Help them to discern your voice and the prompting of the Holy Spirit in the decisions they must make. <coughs> and Lord God, Heavenly Father, hear us as we now bring our deepest concerns to you in this moment of silence. Hear our prayers we ask in the name of your glorious and blessed Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to our second reading this morning, which is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 3, verses 1 to 12a. It's on page 1094 <coughs> of the Pew Bibles. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 12a. I, please forgive me, I am going to read from the New Living Translation this morning. It's slightly different, and there is a reason for it, mainly because of the A part of 12a, and it just helps explain um, what I'm, I'm going to say. So, Acts chapter 3, let's hear the word of God. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man, lame from birth, was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the Beautiful Gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet and began to walk. Then, walking, leaping and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realised he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade, where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. Here ends our reading at the first part of verse 12. And we thank God for this reading from his word. We're going to stand and sing now a well-known song of praise and blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Let's worship God. Sing my Savior all the day long. 
he first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. Now we might assume that Simon and Andrew get carried away to a vastly different life the moment they meet Jesus. Their lives certainly change in one respect. They have found the Messiah. And Jesus tells Simon that his future is to be Peter, whatever that means. But when we read the Matthew passage, as I did earlier on, it appears that Simon and Andrew have gone back to the family fishing business while Jesus starts his ministry somewhere else. I wonder what the two brothers made of it. Who did they tell? I'm sure they must have told at least some of the family because when Jesus found them the second time by the Sea of Galilee, casting their nets for fish and called them to follow him, they left. No faffing about, no decisions about who was going to take command of the ship or anything like that. It was all ready for them just to leave and follow Jesus on a journey that would turn their lives upside down, casting nets to fish for people instead. It was exactly the same for James and John. They just left their father to the fishing business, up sticks and went. Whatever they had heard about Jesus's ministry, they were now fully part of it. And look at the life they discovered. Men of the sea followed Jesus throughout Galilee and beyond, beside Jesus or behind him as he preached the good news of the kingdom, healing every kind of disease and illness. Can you imagine that? Stuff you'd never seen before. Stuff that you didn't imagine people could suffer from. People in pain being healed. And these fishermen were now at the centre of a mass movement. Crowds of people looking for healing and wholeness. To be freed from every kind of infirmity and disability, not to mention demon possession. Must have been truly amazing. And I'm quite sure that Simon's former life must have seemed really quite dull by comparison. But it wasn't all sunshine and lollipops, as we know. During his time fishing for people with Jesus, Simon's mother-in-law became so ill they thought she was going to die of a fever. And I wonder if this challenged Simon's faith. I wonder if he doubted that Jesus might heal everybody else who needed to know that he was a Messiah, but not offer a miracle, the same miracle, to a family who already knew who he was. Well, we don't know, but we do know that the mother-in-law was healed like the others. But Peter had to endure being called Satan by Jesus because he misunderstood what being a Messiah meant and suggested that Peter wouldn't, or that Jesus wouldn't have to die at all. Well, that had to be a pretty low point in his journey of faith. And then there was Peter's denying that he even knew Jesus as he was being hauled up in front of the high priest in a show trial shortly before his crucifixion. That had to be the lowest of the low, really. And yet, what a redemption. The resurrected Jesus spoke to Peter and asked him to declare his love for Jesus the same number of times that he had denied him. Cancelling the curse that Peter 
put himself under. And then we come to the Acts 3 passage. Peter has gone from being an impulsive follower to being a leader of the new Christian community. He now is not an observer of miracles, but one through whom Jesus works miracles, bringing healing, wholeness and forgiveness. Peter is now also a preacher of the good news of the kingdom. He has learned well from following Jesus. The transformation is stunning. Is this a life of rule keeping? Is this a life of drudgery or just being nice to people and giving money to charity? Absolutely not. This is the roller coaster life of excitement and wonder and miracle where fishing for people to join the journey of faith is the one task that we all share. Now you might be reflecting on your own life and thinking, well, oh, it's not like that at all, really. That your life is just quiet, dull, and you've got nothing to offer the kingdom or anything or anyone looking for it. But that is not true at all. Take a moment and reflect on where your journey of faith has taken you. It may not look orthodox, but if you have trusted in Jesus, he is in charge of where he takes you. It may not be filled with miraculous healings, but take a moment to think. You will undoubtedly have experienced times when only God could get you through a situation or find a solution which you could not see at all. Look who Jesus has brought your way to accompany you on your journey at various times. But that person has been exactly the right person you needed. If we follow Jesus, we can be guaranteed that discipleship will not be dull. Because the one who created us knows us better than we know ourselves. He gives us situations to stretch us, to change us, to make us reflect him more and more. And so, to fish for others to join this journey into the kingdom. So why have I given you a fish today? This fish is for you. Simon fished for fish. But Peter fished for people to join the kingdom. We were brought to faith by someone. Someone fished for us through prayer. And we in turn must fish for others. This church needs more people. It needs new people. Now we could pray for a revival of the Holy Spirit to bring a wave of strangers into our church family. But that might, might not be the easiest for them or for you. So instead, I'm asking you to pray for one person. One person that you already know to join us in this church. Don't pray for someone who's already here. It's for someone new. This fish is a reminder for you to pray for that person every day. You can use it as a bookmark. You can change the string to hang it on your door. You could do anything with it. Write the name of the person on the back of the fish. Colour it in. Does it, whatever will help you to remember to pray for one person
that you know to either come back to this church or to join this church. Now, you may become discouraged. We have already seen that there are low points on the journey. But we are all called to be faithful. Peter didn't pack in his belief that Jesus was the Messiah, even after the crucifixion. So if our fish-focused prayer looks as though it isn't going to work, fine, just be faithful. And either keep praying for that person or another as the Holy Spirit guides. I did say another, not instead of. We can all pray for one person to join us. And if we all have someone different, then that's a lot of new people. But they'll all come in because you already know them. And that is what building the family of faith is all about. If someone asks what it's like to follow Jesus, or why they should come here, don't sugarcoat it. This church has had a tough journey as well. It can be very hard just to explain the low points as well as the high points. And seeing yourself as a fisher for sprats or whales to join the kingdom can be a mindset shift. But remember that following Jesus gives us a joy that nothing else on this earth can replicate. It's definitely a roller coaster and not a pedaloon. And that's what we need to show and to offer others. And if we need our faith to be renewed or strengthened, if we think we are hanging on by our fingertips and want to feel a bit more secure, if we're at a point when we are finding hope hard to find or we are distressed by our failures and sin, then we have that communion table to offer us restoration and peace through the reminder of an empty cross and a glorious future. That table is a gift to us all and a reminder that in the highs and lows of life there is one glorious constant, the extent of God's love for us in giving us his son, Jesus, to die for us and give us life in the kingdom for eternity with the other fishes. Amen. Let's just take a moment to bow our heads in silence. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to show us, to reveal to us the name of the person that you want us to pray for. It may be someone already on our hearts. It may be somebody completely random that we've seen in a shop or on the road or whatever. But we pray that you will help us to pray for them. Help us to be fishers for the kingdom. And help us to tell our story. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing now as we conclude this service of worship. We're going to sing, I will sing the wondrous story. And let's just reflect on where our story has brought us to this place. And let's stand and sing, I will sing the wondrous story. <laughs>
bless to us, O God, the doors we open, the thresholds we cross, the roads that lie before us. Go with us as we go and welcome us home. And now my grace, mercy and peace from God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.